We've been practicing five elemental writing skills that all college writers need. And these are going to become more and more familiar to you as we continue in the weeks ahead. Just to remind you about those five, um, those five elemental skills, we've been writing essay shapes. We wrote uh, a fable a couple times, and we've been using this family story shape uh, in essays number four and essay number five. We've been rewriting, doing things multiple times. We've written some observations. Uh, you've been using fluency writing to increase your speed, to increase your focus, and to get the ideas flowing more freely from your brain onto the paper. Fluency writing is such a, a wonderful, dependable practice that only ends up building um, our speed and our focus. Uh, today, we're going to talk uh, more specifically about moving from concrete writing, writing that's specific and detailed in a dialogue, in a description, and moving from that as one pole of the college level writing spectrum to this other pole, writing ideas. When we talk about abstract writing, we're talking about writing um, about our ideas, the meaning of things, and the lessons of things. So to do that, we're going to move into, um, we're going to extend family stories into a real college essay. And when I say that, a real college essay, I'm actually talking about a very specific kind of writing, uh, a very specific animal, if you will. And the name of this animal is called as an expository essay. Expository, you hear the word expose uh, in the word expository. College level writing, uh, most of what we do in this class and in other classes is this expository essay shape. And it means to expose or put forth or set out an idea that is um, explained and proven. So when we're writing expository ideas, we both, expository essays, we know that they have lots of data that's thoughtfully and clearly organized, but that data is also turned to a specific purpose. So we're going to use our family stories as the middle parts of a new essay shape. And this essay shape is called uh, an essay of abstract definition. Fancy words. This is technical terminology. Abstra an essay of abstract, a narrative essay of abstract definition. All that means is that we're using a story, a narrative, to define an abstract idea. We're using a story. We will be using a story. Uh, uh, narrative is a fancy word for story. We'll be using a story to explain, define an abstract idea. So a narrative essay of abstract definition. We need these big terms, we need these precise names uh, to technically point at a specific thing. The reason big words get important, or the reason big words are worth the effort of learning, of getting in our head, narrative essay of abstract definition, the reason they're worth our attention is they help us name things specifically, rather than just sort of some vague or amorphous understanding of what's an essay supposed to do. Well, here we have in this title, this label, just as we have the label fable for that essay shape, we have the label narrative essay of abstract definition for this new essay shape, because it has a specific um, things it has to do. Uh, to help you with this, uh, I'm going to give an example, and this is exactly the kind of thing that I want you guys to be doing uh, as you're preparing your work this week. I want you to first choose one of your stories, essay number four or essay number five. Um, you can start with either one. You'll be using both of them. And the first thing I want you to do is I want you to read your essay out loud. 
I know this sounds strange. I want you to stand up if possible. You can do this in a room. If you have a friend or a family member or a colleague you can grab, it's even better because they can help you with this, is I want you to read the essay out loud. And as you're reading it out loud, I want you to think about the main character. I want you to listen using your ears, not just your eyes, but I want you to listen using your ears for the qual who a who is the main character. That's also an in often an interesting question. And then what um, what are words that you might use to describe her, him, they? Now I say a, a story will always have a main character, or rather one might say the best version we can imagine of that story would make who that main character uh, is clear. Sometimes it's really easy. Oh, this is a story about my Uncle Saul. And it's very simple that Uncle Saul did this and did this. Sometimes it's a little complex. Sometimes it seems like there might be two people who are the main character. Uh, if the couple who got together, uh, is the couple the main character? Or does one of the people really uh, make it happen? Could a group be a main character? It could be, can be, uh, but, but, but it's this list, reading aloud and listening is a kind, this is a kind of critical thinking. It's a kind of, hmm, okay, this story may have lots of different places and go in a few different ways, but you know, the really, what I really think the story wants to be about is that's, that's really about, it's not just Aunt Mabel, it's, it's really about Uncle, uh, Uncle Saul. So, so you get to decide and you make to use your brain and your listening muscles to decide who you think the main character is. And then as you listen and as you make that question clear, you're gonna be listening, uh, thinking about describing him, describing him or her. So that's your first job in this, uh, in this um, uh, essay of abstract definition. First thing is to reread one of your stories, decide who the main character or characters are, and start thinking about um, uh, words that would describe them. So I will see you in just a few minutes. I want you to do that first. And then I'm gonna give you an example of what this looks like uh, with uh, a piece of my own writing and a piece of, uh, of the own next exercise. See you in a second.